Maternal and Child Health Nursing 1. Question 1. A postpartum patient was in labor for 30 hours and had ruptured membranes for 24 hours. For which of the following would the nurse be alert? A. Endometritis. B. Endometriosis. C. Salpinitis. D. Pelvic thrombophlebitis. Answer, A. Endometritis is an infection of the uterine lining and can occur after prolonged rupture of membranes. Endometriosis does not occur after a strong labor and prolonged rupture of membranes. Salpinitis is a tubal infection and could occur if endometritis is not treated. Pelvic thrombophlebitis involves a clot formation but it is not a complication of prolonged rupture of membranes. Question 2. A client at 36 weeks gestation is scheduled for a routine ultrasound prior to anamniocentesis. After teaching the client about the purpose for the ultrasound, which of the following client statements would indicate to the nurse in charge that the client needs further instruction? A. The ultrasound will help to locate the placenta. B. The ultrasound identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. C. The test will determine where to insert the needle. D. The ultrasound locates a pool of amniotic fluid. Maternal and Child Health Nursing 1. Answer, B. Before amniocentesis, a routine ultrasound is valuable in locating the placenta, locating a pool of amniotic fluid, and showing the physician where to insert the needle. Color Doppler imaging ultrasonography identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. A routine ultrasound does not accomplish this. Question 3. While the postpartum client is receiving herapin for thrombophlebitis, which of the following drugs would the nurse MICA expect to administer if the client develops complications related to heparin therapy? A. Calcium glucon 8 B. Protamine sulfate C. Methylignovine methergine D. Nitrofurantin macrodantin Answer, B. Protamine sulfate is a heparin antagonist given intravenously to counteract bleeding complications caused by heparin overdose. Maternal and Child Health Nursing 1 
Answer. B. Before amnios. Answer. D. While caring for an infant receiving phototherapy for treatment of jaundice, vital signs are checked every two to four hours because hyperthermia can occur due to the phototherapy lights. Question 5. A primigra vita in active labor is about nine days post-term. The client desires a bilateral pudendal block anesthesia before delivery. After the nurse explains this type of anesthesia to the client, which of the following locations identified by the client as the area of relief would indicate to the nurse that the teaching was effective? A. Back. B. Abdomen. C. Fundus. D. Perineum. Answer. D. A bilateral pudental block is used for vaginal deliveries to relieve pain primarily in the perineum and vagina. Pudental block anesthesia is adequate for episiotomy and its repair. Question 6. The nurse is caring for a primigra vita at about two months and one week gestation. After explaining self-care measures for common discomforts of pregnancy, the nurse determines that the client understands the instructions when she says, A. Nausea and vomiting can be decreased if I eat a few crackers before her icing. B. If I start to leak colostrum, I should cleanse my nipples with soap and water. C. If I have a vaginal discharge, I should wear nylon underwear. D. Leg cramps can be alleviated if I put an ice pack on the area. Question 5. A primigra vita in active labor is about nine days post-term. The client desires a bilateral pudendal block anesthesia before delivery. After the nurse explains this type of anesthesia to the client, which of the following locations identified by the client as the area of relief would indicate to the nurse that the teaching was effective? A. Back. Question 7. 30 hours after delivery. The nurse in charge plans discharge teaching for the client about infant care. By this time, the nurse expects that the phase of postpartal psychological adaptation that the client would be in would be termed which of the following? A. Taking in. B. Letting go. C. Taking hold. D. Resolution. Answer, D. While caring for an... Question 6. The nurse is caring for a primigra vita at about two months and one week gestation. After explaining self-care measures for common discomforts of pregnancy, the nurse determines that the client understands the instructions when she says, A. Nausea and vomiting can be decreased if I eat a few crackers before her icing. B. If I start to leak colostrum, I should cleanse my nipples with soap and water. C. If I have a vaginal discharge, I should wear nylon underwear. D.
Question 5, a Premi Gravida. Question 7, 30 hours after delivery, the nurse in charge plans discharge teaching for the client about infant care. By this time, the nurse expects that the phase of postpartal psychological adaptation that the client would be in would be termed which of the f answer, D. While caring for an infant receiving phototherapy for treatment of jaundice, vital signs are checked every two to four hours because hyperthermia can occur due to the phototherapy lights. Question 6, the nurse is caring for a Answer, C. Prevention of breast engorgement is key. The best technique is to empty the breast regularly with feeding. Engorgement is less likely when the mother and neonate are together, as in single room maternity care continuous rooming in, because nursing can be done conveniently to meet the neonate's and mother's needs. Question 10. When the nurse on duty accidentally bumps the bassinet, the neonate throws out its arms, hands opened, and begins to cry. The nurse interprets this reaction as indicative of which of the following reflexes? A. Stardell reflex. B. Babinski reflex. C. Grasping reflex. D. Tonic neck reflex. Question 7, 30 hours after delivery. Answer, D. While caring for an infant receiving phototherapy for treatment of jaundice, vital signs are checked every two to four hours because hyperthermia can occur due to the phototherapy lights. Question 6, the nurse is caring for a primi gravida at about 2 months and 1 week gestation. After explaining self-care measures for common discomforts of pregnancy, the nurse determines that the client understands the instructions when she says. A. Nausea and vomiting can be decreased if I eat a few crackers before her icing. B. If I start to leak colostrum. I should cleanse my nipples with soap and water. C. If I have a vaginal discharge, I should wear nylon underwear. D. Leg cramps can be alleviated. Answer. C. Prevention of breath. Answer. A. Taylor sitting is an excellent exercise that helps to strengthen the client's back muscles and also prepares the client for the process of labor. The client should be encouraged to rest periodically during the day and avoid standing or sitting in one position for a long time. Question 5. A primi gravida in active labor is about nine days post-term. The client desires a bilateral pudendal block anesthesia before delivery. After the nurse explains this type of anesthesia to the client, 
Which of the following locations identified by the client as the area of relief would indicate to the nurse that the teaching was effective? A. Back. B. Abdomen. C. Fundus. D. Perineum. Answer, D. If bleeding occurs after circumcision, the nurse should first apply gently pressure on the area with sterile gauze. Bleeding is not common but requires attention when it occurs. Answer, C. Prevention of breast engorgement is key. The best technique is to empty the breast regularly with feeding. Engorgement is less likely when the mother and neonate are together, as in single room maternity care continuous rooming in, because nursing can be done conveniently to meet the neonate's and mother's needs. Answer, A. Taylor sitting is Question 5, a primigravida in active labor is about 9 days post-term. The client desires a bilateral pudendal block anesthesia before delivery. After the nurse explains this type of anesthesia to the client, which of the following locations identified by the client as the area of relief would indicate to the nurse that the teaching was effective? A. Back. B. Abdomen. C. Fundus. Answer, D. If bleeding occur Answer, B. Before amniocentesis, a routine ultrasound is valuable in locating the placenta, locating a pool of amniotic fluid, and showing the physician where to insert the needle. Color Doppler imaging ultrasonography identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. A routine ultrasound does not accomplish this. Question 15. A client tells the nurse, I think my baby likes to hear me talk to him. When discussing neonates and stimulation with sound, which of the following would the nurse include as a means to elicit the best response? A. High-pitched speech with tonal variations. B. Low-pitched speech with a sameness of tone. C. Cooing sounds rather than words. D. Repeated stimulation with loud sounds.
Answer. D. If bleeding occurs after circumcision, the nurse should first apply gently pressure on the area with sterile gauze. Bleeding is not common but requires attention when it occurs. Answer, B. Before amniose. Question 15. A client tells the nurse, I think my baby likes to hear me talk to him. When discussing neonates and stimulation with sound, which of the following would the nurse include as a means to elicit the best response? A. High-pitched speech with tonal variations. B. Low-pitched speech with a sameness of tone. C cooing sounds rather than words. D. Repeated stimulation with loud sounds. Answer, D. If bleeding occurs after circumcision, the nurse should first apply gently pressure on the area with sterile gauze. Bleeding is not common but requires attention when it occurs. Answer, B. Before amniocentesis, a routine ultrasound is valuable in locating the placenta, locating a pool of amniotic fluid, and showing the physician where to insert the needle. Color Doppler imaging ultrasonography identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. A routine ultrasound does not accomplish this. Question 15. A client tells the nurse.
Answer. D. If bleeding occurs. Answer. B. Before amniocentesis, a routine ultrasound is valuable in locating the placenta, locating a pool of amniotic fluid, and showing the physician where to insert the needle. Color Doppler imaging ultrasonography identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. A routine ultrasound does not accomplish this. Question 15. A client tells the nurse, I think my baby likes to hear me talk to him. When discussing neonates and stimulation with sound, which of the following would the nurse include as a means to elicit the best response? A. High-pitched speech with tonal variations. B. Low-pitched speech with a sameness of tone. C. Cooing sounds rather than words. D. Repeated stimulation with loud sounds. Answer, D. If bleeding occurs after circumcision, the nurse should first apply gently pressure on the area with sterile gauze. Bleeding is not common but requires attention when it occurs. Answer, B. Before amnios. Question 15. A client tells the nurse, I think my baby likes to hear me talk to him. When discussing neonates and stimulation with sound, which of the following would the nurse include as a means to elicit the best response? A. High-pitched speech with tonal variations. B. Low-pitched speech with a sameness of tone. C cooing sounds rather than words. D. Repeated stimulation with loud sounds. Question 22. A female adult patient is taking a progestin-only oral contraceptive, or mini-pill. Progestin use may increase the patient's risk for A. Endometriosis B. Female hypogonadism C. Premenstrual syndrome D. Tubal or ectopic pregnancy Question 5, a primigravida. Answer, D. Women taking the mini pill have a higher incidence of tubal and ectopic pregnancies, possibly because progestin slows ovum transport through the fallopian tubes. Endometriosis, female hypogonadism, and premenstrual syndrome are not associated with progestin-only oral contraceptives.
Answer. B. Before amniocentesis, a routine ultrasound is valuable in locating the placenta, locating a pool of amniotic fluid, and showing the physician where to insert the needle. Color Doppler imaging ultrasonography identifies blood flow through the umbilical cord. A routine ultrasound does not accomplish this. Question 15. A client tells the nurse. Question 22. A female adult patient is taking a progestin-only oral contraceptive, or mini-pill. Progestin use may increase the patient's risk for a. Endometriosis. b. Female hypogonadism. c. Premenstrual syndrome. d. Tubal or ectopic pregnancy. Maternal and Child Health Nursing 1 Answer, B. Protamine sulfate. Question 25. Five hours after birth, a neonate is transferred to the nursery, where the nurse intervenes to prevent hypothermia. What is a common source of radiant heat loss? A. Low room humidity. B. Cold weight scale. C. Cools incubator walls. D. Cool room temperature. Maternal and Child Health Nursing 1 Answer, D. If bleeding occurs after circumcision, the nurse should first apply gently pressure on the area with sterile gauze. Bleeding is not common but requires attention when it occurs.
Answer. D. A bilateral. Question 22. A female adult patient is taking a progestin-only oral contraceptive, or mini-pill. Progestin use may increase the patient's risk for A. Endometriosis B. Female hypogonadism C. Premenstrual syndrome D. Tubal or ectopic pregnancy Question 27. The nurse in charge is caring for a patient who is in the first stage of labor. What is the shortest but most difficult part of this stage? A. Active phase. B. Complete phase. C. Latent phase. D. Transitional phase. Answer. D. A bilateral pudental block is used for vaginal deliveries to relieve pain primarily in the perineum and vagina. Pudental block anesthesia is adequate for episiotomy and its repair. Question 22. A female adult patient. Answer. B. Measures that help relieve nipple soreness in a breastfeeding patient include lubrication the nipples with a few drops of expressed milk before feedings, applying ice compresses just before feeding, letting the nipples air dry after feedings, and avoiding the use of soap on the nipples. Question 29. The nurse is developing a teaching plan for a patient who is 8 weeks pregnant. The nurse should tell the patient that she can expect to feel the fetus move at which time? A. Between 10 and 12 weeks gestation. B. Between 16 and 20 weeks gestation. C. Between 21 and 23 weeks gestation. D between 24 and 26 weeks gestation.
Question 5. A primigravida. Answer. D. A bilateral pudental block is used for vaginal deliveries to relieve pain primarily in the perineum and vagina. Pudental block anesthesia is adequate for episiotomy and its repair. Question 22. A female adult patient is taking a progestin-only oral contraceptive, or mini-pill. Progestin use may increase the patient's risk for a. endometriosis b. female hypogonadism c. premenstrual syndrome d. tubal or ectopic pregnancy Question 29. The nurse is developing a teaching plan for a patient who is 8 weeks pregnant. The nurse should tell the patient that she can expect to feel the fetus move at which time? A. Between 10 and 12 weeks gestation. B. Between 16 and 20 weeks. Answer. B. Measures that help relieve nipple soreness in a